bars of uniformly tapering sections so in this uh, lecture we will talk about the bars of uniformly tapering uh, sections so broadly speaking this uniformly tapering sections can be classified as circular cross section and uh, a tapering section with a rectangular cross section now let's see a circular cross section as you can see on the left and right we have got a circular cross section and this bar is tapering what do you mean by taper the diameter uh, is gradually decreasing so here we have d1 as the diameter which is bigger and here we have d2 as the diameter which is quite smaller so in this your d1 is more than your d2 so it is gradually decreasing from d1 to d2 and the length of this uh, tapering bar is l and the load being applied is p so in this case the deformation if you want to find so this delta will be equal to 4 pl by pi e d1 into d2 so this is basically your deformation that we are interested in we will see how we achieve this now in this rectangular cross section if we have uh, this uh, tapering bar whose length is l the thickness is t of course you need to maintain this uniform thickness otherwise this cross section will change and hence it will no longer be a uniform bar so we are interested in uniform bar but at the same time it should be tapering so this uh, left hand side with uh, this height is a and it is gradually decreasing up to this right hand side height which is b and the load being applied is p the uniform thickness is t and the length is l so in this case uh, the deformation delta is equals to pl by t into a minus b times e into ln of a by b where this common terminology is you are quite well aware of this l is your length t is uniform thickness p is your uh, load application of the load a b you know it and e is your modulus of elasticity now let's see the derivation how we achieved this relation uniformly tapering circular cross section so we have taken a uniformly tapering cross section and at a distance of x from the left hand side we have taken a very small elemental section which is of length dx and the diameter is let's say d so how to achieve this so we know that the boundary conditions we know that at x equals to 0 we have diameter d is equal to d1 at x equals to l your diameter d is equal to d2 so we have come to this relation you need to remember this relation whenever such sort of derivation is required so let's check whether this derivation this uh, relation is correct or not so this d is equal to d1 minus of d1 minus d2 into x by l if you substitute x equals to 0 this whole term will become 0 and you will ultimately get d equals to d1 now if you substitute x equals to l now in this case here this term becomes cancelled and here it will be d1 minus d1 minus d2 so this gets cancelled as you can see so ultimately we will get d equals to d2 and hence we can uh, quite uh, sufficiently say that yes this relation is quite valid for this particular uh, diameter now let's take this elemental section out and this application of load you know that due to the application line of action of force we can apply the load here itself so this is the diameter which is d and this is your length of this uh, section which is dx now from fundamentals we know that deformation is nothing but pl by a right where so the def the elemental deformation in this particular section we can write is as uh, d delta equals to p into dx by a into e where a is equal to pi by 4 into d square d we have derived this relation so you can put here if you substitute the value of a in this relation you will be getting this d delta as this expression you can reframe it and then if you want to find the total deformation in the entire block that means i need to integrate this um, the deformation from x equals to 0 to x equals to l so that's what I have done here so if you integrate this so for this we will need a very special integration formula that is integration of ax plus b whole to the power of n with respect to x so if integrated this is the relation that you need to remember now if you compare these and these two relations you can find easily that n is equal to minus 2 then a is equal to minus of d1 minus d2 in by l b is equal to d1 and so on so if you substitute the direct uh, relation the direct values of this integration by comparing this you will be getting that 
this delta is equal to 4 p by pi e and if you substitute this relation and if you put the limits out here this everything will get reframed cancelled out and ultimately you will achieve up to this relation which is delta equals to 4 pl by pi e d1 into d2 now what was the crucial steps out here the first crucial step was to think that of course we need to solve it by integration and integration requires the variable formation right so we this relation was the first crucial step that how to achieve this uh, the, uh, the value of this diameter in terms of other variables the second crucial relation was this that is the fundamental uh, relation you should know what is the fundamental equation for any deformation due to application of load the third crucial step was the integration okay the integration part so you should remember this integration some standard integration formulas if you don't remember then uh, that will be a problem for you for solving the problem now let's move on to another category which is uniformly tapering circular sections here also will proceed the same uh, here we have the vertical height as A, the vertical height on the right hand side as B, the thickness as T and at a distance of X from the left hand side of this tapering, uh, tapering bar, the, the thickness is taken as DX and this total length is L. So here also again we can write that at x equals to 0 m is equal to a. So we have assumed that this vertical height at any section x is m. So at x equals to 0 this m has to become equal to a and at x equals to l this m has to become equal to b. Now we can write the same relation as in the previous case. So the fundamental deformation equation we can write as d delta equals to p into dx by a e where a is equal to m into t which is nothing but the cross sectional area so here we have the cross sectional area for this particular section as m into t which is length into breadth so and hence we can write this now substitute the value of m as here you will get the value of a as this now d delta is equal to this now if you integrate this if you integrate this from 0 to L, you will get this relation. Now here also the another crucial step is how to integrate this part. So for this, you need to remember the standard integration formula that is integration of 1 by Px plus Q dx. Generally in the textbooks, it's given Ax plus B, but since here we have taken this as A and B, so that is why I have modified this formula and you can remember this anyway, you can remember it. So if you compare these two relations, you will be getting um, this. If you compare these two, you will be getting P is equal to this part and Q is equal to this part. And if you substitute here, this is the value of the integration. Substitute, do the, all the reframing and everything. Substitute the limits. And if you substitute this, you will ultimately reach to this relation, which is delta equals to PL by T into A minus B into E into ln of A by B. So I hope you understood the approach how to find the deformation in any section. Uh, generally in textbooks these two cross sections are given but in competitive exams or maybe some in subjective exams or in your semester exams they can frame questions in any random manner but the approach you should remember that at any section from the left hand side or from the right hand side you have to take that section find the deformation in that particular smaller section elemental deformation and then finally integrate that's the only challenge for it and what is uh, important from exam point of view is to remember these two fundamental direct relations because many times at many times they have asked questions directly so you need to substitute the, the just the values need not of going so much into derivation in terms of objective exams okay but for subjective exams and your semester exams this derivation and the approach is quite very very important i hope you enjoyed it and learned it in depth see you in the next lecture till then bye